the opposite of that a lot of the time is referred to as like negative racing in the sense that like yeah. everybody just kind of waits and then they don't want you to get too far up the road sort of a thing. Right. Amber, is, was that like your experience in world tour racing? And what I want to get to is like, how do we manage that? Because personally speaking, that's something that I've encountered quite a lot is that sort of racing where it's like, look, like we're not going to make the break happen, but we are, so, you know, you can go up the road if you want, but we're not going to let you get far away. So is that something that you mm -hmm. encounter regularly? And how do you, as an amateur, how can we race against that effectively? Uh, that's a good question. And I think th there's a couple, I want to step back for just a second, if it's okay, and talk mm -hmm. about what we were saying. I want to just make a comment in defense of the amateur teams who are racing differently, <laughs> <laughs> because I do think that there's a key difference here. And Iman, please jump in if I'm, I'm not getting this right. But one of the things that I noticed was, especially in Europe and especially in Belgium, and in the Netherlands where the roads are really narrow and they're really technicals in the sense that you have a lot of turns and there isn't, you know, you're not on like a four, some of these, even the, the office park crits, they're like four lanes wide roads. <laughs> I mean, there's way. so much space, <laughs> but when you're racing on roads that are really narrow and there's just no space, you're really depending mostly on positioning skill. So you don't actually need a lot of teamwork as long as you can put yourself in the right position. Like you don't need, it really helps to have a teammate put you in position if you need to. But if you're really good at positioning, you can stay in the draft and you can be sneaky and be exactly where you need to be. And that's a lot easier to protect a position like that if you're good at it <laughs> when the roads are really narrow. But in the States, when you have these huge wide open roads, everybody's vulnerable to attack all of the time. And so you actually what ends up happening in order to get to the finish in order to make the selections is you need teammates who are going to be covering attacks and shutting down brakes for you if you're the protected rider. So it actually makes sense in amateur racing in the States to sometimes say like, this is our guy because we, we need to save someone and make sure that one person is going to be fresh and not chasing everything down and not shutting everything down. Whereas in Belgium, in these Kermesses, you can have like four guys who are super savvy positioners just be in the right place and make those selections based on positioning. So I don't want to like hammer too hard on the American amateur teams because like there is, there is a reason to race that way. That's not just, you know, being silly and chasing down the wrong stuff. So I don't know, even does that, does that resonate with you? A hundred percent, a hundred. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't really say it any better myself. You're right. I mean, <laughs> in, in America, you have these, you know, huge boulevards in there in these industrial parks built for semis moving through. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's really it's the truth. But when you come to Belgium, it's those farm roads, those crosswind sections, those little, little, those little intricate parts of the course that are so crucial. Like I said, like, if you don't make the first 10 guys, the race is gone. Like, see you later. See you never. And um, you, you actually just have to be really strong to just get to that point. And then like the wind or the stones, or, you know, if you make that first echelon, we'll do it for you. So yeah. it's, it's just being smart. It's being able to know where you need to be at the right moment. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not always being the strongest. It's being the smartest mm -hmm. and knowing how to be sneaky. So yeah, yeah. Amber said it great. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's kind, of, Thanks. that's kind of an interesting point. Then maybe that experience racing in the U S also still helps you in that regard too, just to, you have more tools in the tool chest, so to speak. Right. In the sense that you're used to racing in that context. It would be like mm -hmm. having a center line rule, the whole race in a road race <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that people actually abided by. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like you actually <laughs> had to respect it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. circling, circling back to the negative racing thing, Amber, like how, if I'm a racer and I'm in a situation and I, we actually hear this pretty often in particular from women who have submitted these questions because they, a lot of the time they race in smaller fields mm -hmm. and those smaller yeah. fields tend to have like a huge, like, it's like a couple of really strong athletes. And, and then since it's smaller, you kind of get like those, pull, those edge cases, but then the bell curve kind of sits outside of that. So how do you respond to that sort of racing when that negative racing, when they just won't let you get away, um, they all seem to have enough fitness to drag you down, but they don't have enough fitness to actually make something work or they just don't want to. <laughs> How do you yeah, respond so to that? Quick definition here. So for folks that aren't familiar with the term negative racing, it doesn't mean like negative in the term that it's like bad or wrong. It's just a different, it's a, a random term, but basically what it says is if you have a couple people in the race who are clearly a lot stronger than everyone else in the field and everyone else in the field knows it, then everyone else in the field is going to feel 
you know, they're going to be much more reluctant to do a lot of work because they know that they're going to be vulnerable to these other really strong writers. So they're going to look to the really strong writers to do most of the work because they don't want to make themselves vulnerable. And they're hoping that their best chance is going to be to see one of these stronger writers do a lot of work, tire themselves out, and then actually get to that point. So everyone in the race is looking to these one or two writers to make the race, to create the race. And so what ends up happening is if either of those people is trying to attack, everybody's on them just immediately. <laughs> like they can't go anywhere. Cause you know, everyone wants to be in the break that they're going to initiate. Um, you know, they don't want to let them get up the road cause no one wants to have to chase them. But then for that person, it's really hard. Cause like you want to get in there and race and you want to have a challenging race and you're willing to, to, to try to make that happen. But at the same time, it can get really frustrating because nobody's willing to work with you. Everything's getting shut down. Um, and it makes for a really different race dynamic than if you had maybe two or three really strong teams and it was more of an even playing field. Mm -hmm. And it's just tough. It's one of those situations where you have to just accept the dynamic that's happening. And sometimes you really have to risk a lot to try to win the race. So if you're the person who's being marked, you have to be willing to lose and put it out there and really go deep and try to make the race hard, even though, you know, it's making you vulnerable to attack. And if you're the person who's not as strong, you have to be willing to be patient and maybe, you know, you, yeah, you have to be willing to lose in order to win. Basically, like you really have to be willing to make that kind of a risk. Pete, I think you were going to jump in. Yeah, yeah, no, I was going to say, I think this is a great example of, uh, in American racing, there's usually less opportunities to win. Um, <laughs> if you think about it that way. Right. And so people, uh, in our racing, some people really want to create more opportunities to win no, no matter what that looks like, whether that's, you know, riding really hard, right at the gun, you know, like there's, there's multiple ways to create opportunities in a race that suit you so that you have a better chance of winning. Um, where in Eamon's case, I think, uh, you have to have your, you have to be at a high enough level, check all the boxes for the, you know, positioning, handling, getting in there. And then the opportunities kind of, uh, bloom, I guess in, in the race, <laughs> uh, based on you checked all the boxes, you're there, you're fit, you're strong. And then the opportunities start coming to you. Um, where in our racing, it's up to everybody else since we don't, um, you know, depending on the course and what's going on, the opportunities are really limited. And so it's up to the racers to create the opportunities. Or if there's um, kind of negative racing, then that shuts down more opportunities. And so to me, it seems like if, if that's something that you need, you need to create more opportunities in a race for you to win, even if it is leaving you vulnerable, um, because without the opportunities, there's just no way it's going to happen. And when you're talking opportunities, Pete, you're talking like an early break, uh, winning from a reduced group. Also, of course, a sprint finish is a, it's an opportunity, but then also a long solo break. It's like all of those different things. If you have that one card to play, then it's really tough. Um, and if you're that one athlete who is being marked, like you said, Amber, then it's really hard because you feel like you're playing poker with your cards up, right? In the sense that like everybody kind of knows you and they... <laughs> They're kind of seeing what you, they know what you can do. Um, so that's gotta be tough. So Iman is, is, is the racing negative over there that you're experiencing or is it different? And if so, how have you had to change your approach? Cause when you race here, I can attest to this. It's quite negative and you are the marked man. Um, <laughs> I am the man. I yeah. am. Amber you was talking and I was just nodding my head. Yes. yes. Oh, yep. Amber just keep Amber can just answer all my questions. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> she can just talk for me. And she is pro. No. She is pro. Yeah, no, she knows the whole, she knows the game, which, and, and Pete, I'm sure has been in situations too, but yeah, it's, um, it's, you know, having the fitness, it's being, it's just checking all those boxes, but then, you know, being over here, like I, the other, you know, part of it is being in the game and knowing the game and getting in with the clicks. And like I said, you, you know, if you're in a town that breeds hot, you know, you know, five of the hitters, you got to know who, who's from that town and who's good and who's willing to pay and who's willing not to pay. And you don't know the language and let alone the dialect and, <laughs> you might be fit, but trust me, there's a hundred other dudes that are going to ride you off the wheel just because they can. And uh, so you might get lucky. You might find yourself, Oh, I made the move. You know, I'm, you know, six laps to go. This is crunch time. There's only 15 guys left. Great. 
trust me, 14 guys there don't want you to win and you will not win. <laughs> <laughs> End of story. If 14 Belgians don't, okay, let's say you even get more lucky and you make that last split in the last three laps and now you're in the group of six. Trust me, five guys there are going to crash you because they will not have you win if they think you're the strongest. They'll take you off the back. They'll yell at you. They'll do whatever they can because you're, at the end of the day, you're taking what is theirs and they're threatened. And so, I mean, I remember before I got my call into the Belgian mafia, Kermes level, so to speak, <laughs> I was taken off so many breakaways and I was yelled at and I was, and it's discouraging. It's scary. You know, like this guy is going to hurt me. But then it's, you know, like you have to remind yourself why you're here, what, what you're trying to achieve. And you need to then almost play to his weakness and then almost stoop to a degree after the race. Hey man, like I'm just trying to race or, Hey man, you want to go on a training ride or, Hey man, like you, you want to get a coffee. You almost want to get in with the boys to then be racing with the boys and not be the outsider anymore and try to integrate. And that's why I've been here for also 10 years, you know, trying to integrate to then be able to be a key player. Mm. Like it's yeah. really, it's, it's about the integration and about being accepted and being almost giving your past, like, all right, you can race now. Like you, you've showed us you're not coming to take somebody. Ours. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, somebody once said to me, you're not here to make friends, but you don't want to make enemies. Yeah. And I think that's a good way of putting it. Like you're definitely super competitive on the bike and you're not going to give an inch when you're on the bike. But like you said, you don't want to, you don't actually be wanting to to make enemies with everybody in the field yeah. because there is, there is an etiquette. There's a, pri there's a that... price to pay. There's a price yeah. to pay. You know, like you don't want to be that mean, loud American. Oh man. Everyone's going to know you, you know, like, <laughs> and, and, and my personality, I'm, I'm hot headed on and off the bike. And so I really had to learn how to dial it down, how to simmer down, how to shut my mouth and play the game. Hmm. And this is interesting because you're, we're talking like a very high level of competition, right? Um, Locally, this probably exists for some people listening to this, maybe even at just like the very, at the group ride level, even, you know, yeah, um, but yeah. it is under, it's whatever the dynamic is, it's important to understand it for sure. Um, if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it. If you think I have better hair than Jonathan, give it a thumbs up. If not, leave a comment. My hair is better than his.